G'day, I thought I'd show you how I would go about reducing a German hedgehog unit and opening up the line a little bit. And this is in, of course in the scenario of Kharkov and we're looking at a unit here east of Kharkov, German, uh, Soviet Turn 2. So the Germans decided to stay put and as you can see, these units here, we can see a hedgehog. They've got those little red uh, uh, surrounds, which indicates they're, they're hedgehog. So they've, they've, they're at that level, extra high level of entrenchment. Now, hedgehog units are, in fact, as has been pointed out in some forums, they're tricky little buggers, but there are ways and means to to remove them. Let's just have a look at the incidental data here. If we look, if we select German, uh, Germany, the Germany country, we'll notice that there are two columns here, entrenchment rules, you have entrenched and you have hedgehogged. And you'll notice that the there is uh, differences between the two. Plus 80% to strength, strength bonus, plus four combat shift bonus, and also die roll uh, bonuses, so IF stands for indirect fire. Uh, both entrenched and hedgehog units get a minus three, sorry, minus one on the dice roll. But you also notice that the retreat dice roll is modified as well. Minus one for entrenched units. In fact, minus three off the retreat die roll uh, during a close combat. So they're not only sticky and difficult to, to budge, but... Um, uh, to, to kill, but uh, they're also difficult to budge because of the retreat die roll modifier. You notice, for instance, if we shift to Soviet, just, just for your interest, that there are differences between uh, countries when it comes to defence strength bonus, for instance. Uh, Soviets, not quite as good as the Germans in that regard for this particular scenario. And usually the first thing I look at is, okay, so what assets do the Soviets have to, to make this job a bit easier? Um, I think we should be going after this unit. Uh, if we move, let's have a look at these. Uh, let's find a, a unit that's good for spotting. Uh, here's one. So it has a plus two hex, means it's got additional spotting capabilities out, an additional two hexes from standard units. Let's just see if there's much else hanging out here that we should be aware of. Computer plots the best path. You can, of course, manually move it. Let's just move it close. I don't believe there's anything sitting just out here at this stage. Now, of course, in this particular scenario, the Soviets have... Uh, number of heavy artillery units which are, are listed here in the uh, the unit roster panel using this button and if you notice on the right hand side here in the uh, the unit display they are heavy artillery units are identified by a large die and also a um, an artillery shell if we compare that to a normal artillery unit say the one underneath No artillery shell here for just a standard unit, and also a slightly higher chance to cause, sorry, lower chance to cause a casualty step. Now, these units are fantastic because what they do is you'll notice, if, let's say, let's assume we select, let's select a standard artillery unit. When you are trying to cause a casualty step on an entrenched unit, you'll notice that uh, two die need to be rolled. So if we go to CRT data and look at the hit probabilities here, you can see that if we roll one die, it's a 67% chance of causing a, a step if you have to roll three or higher. But if there's two die that need two die, two dice that need to be rolled, it drops to 44%. So it's quite a significant difference. 
Now, the beauty of the heavy artillery units are that, let's locate that heavy artillery unit again. It's five hexes away. You notice it's only got four hex range, so we'll need to move it a hex closer. And then you'll notice that it lights up here. Notice that um, it's only showing one yellow die, which means that your probability for a step loss is very high. Also note, uh, along the top, you've got those four little uh, grey uh, squares or dots. They indicate the number of artillery uh, op uh, uh, fire missions per hex for this particular turn for the Russians. So in this particular case, uh, four artillery units can fire. So that, that, again, that's quite a high number. So look, I suggest the best way to start to knock off, let's knock off a step, hopefully anyway. <laughs> let's, uh, let's put in a, a, uh, an indirect fire. Note as well, it shows one. So in other words, an automatic step loss. But notice when we go over this particular unit or another, it's actually increased uh, to two or higher. And the reason behind that is, as we saw in the incidental data, die roll bonus, indirect fire is a minus one. So therefore, uh, it, it effectively adds an additional spot to the die for that. That's why that's there. So let's uh, let's put that attack in. And uh, that's very good. It's come up as a... we It rolled a three. So that's good. Yay, we're on our way. Now, depending on the on the uh, airstrikes available on the bombard panel, at the moment we have two. We need to roll three or higher. My suggestion now would would be to cause an additional step loss. So let's use some air support against that hex as well. Fingers crossed. In we go. And yep, we've got a result that we want. So now we this this unit is looking a little bit sadder and a lot more easy to kill. I think the next step is have a look at the combat advisor. It will give you an indication of what's available, uh, what kind of damage you can do to that hex, and that is very good news. It's saying a 12 to 1 um, with an automatic overrun. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that it's effectively going to soak up. If you, You'll notice that the units and stacks that it's highlighted to get that result. Now, look, you could do it that way, but... Depending on the situation, you may want to use these units elsewhere, of course. So, although this is not always the best way to do it, there a, a way to do it, given that the Soviets have quite a large number of units to start with, and they really only have four turns to, to, to really cause some punishment to the Germans. But my suggestion here would be, look, they can afford to take a, ste a step loss or two, uh, that's the nature of the beast, really, for the Soviets. They are very keen to die for their mother country. So let's let's choose the 169th Rifle Division. Let's move them in. Let's combine that all those three units into the attack, and you can see that we've got 1.5 to 1, which are not fantastic odds, but you will notice here that we've got there is an automatic chance of knocking off another defender step. If we want to raise the odds, You'll notice here in the pop-up, final combat odds, the next CRT will be 2 to 1, but we need an additional 19 combat factors to get to that. So 1.5 to 1 is what we're currently using. 2 to 1, slightly, not a great deal different, 
not a great deal different. Now, just out of interest, this pop-up here shows you the, the red dice along the bottom actually show you the chance of a, a retreat being inflicted, or the retreat die roll. you notice that this is a 6. So in other words, at the 2 to 1 column, you'd also have to roll a 6 on the separate retreat die roll to actually effect a retreat. Now, that's very good for unentrenched units, but again, let's just cancel that for a sec. Let's go back to incidental data. Now, again, German, entrenched. Well, they actually get a minus one off their retreat die roll, so that would mean it would be pretty well impossible at the two to one column to inflict a retreat value. But look at this. Hedgehog units get a minus three, so not so good. So another reason probably why it may be better to choose a couple of assaults. So let's do that. Let's, let's put in this assault. Combine all three units into that assault. 76 factors against 19. We've got <laughs> very bad uh, combat odds here. You'll probably notice if you have, do the unit pop-up, every single hex, because it is hedgehog, has no chance of providing a positive shift. It's not so good. But we're going to knock off another step. And they've only got two left. So let's put it in. Here we go. Okay. A1, D1. So attacker loses one step. That's us there. Defender loses one step. That's them there. Hey. Let's quit out of that. Let's have a look at this German unit now. It's not looking so healthy, is it? Okay. Let's bring another uh, infantry division in. 244th. They're raring for a fight, so let's get them in. I think we're one to one with these guys. How much do we need? We need another five to bring us up to 1.5 to one. Now, if we go to 1.5 to one, we're pretty much guaranteed it. See here, if we roll a one, if it's a one die roll, then we're not we're going to lose units, but to lose steps, but we're not going to inflict any. So let's let's bring in a, another unit. Let's um, drag in the 175th. Just one unit of it. That's probably all we need because there's 13 combat factors there which should amply cover what we need. Ah, and there we go. So now we've got what we want. Now, well, let's cross fingers we don't get too badly burnt. Fire away. Attacker 2, Defender 1. So we've lost a couple of steps. Defender's lost one, but he ain't there anymore. So <laughs> that's pretty good. Now we've opened up a bit of a hole here. Now, the next stage of this would be to... We haven't committed our armour yet. Uh, sorry, that's not quite true. We have committed one unit of the armour. There's still a bit left over here. My next victim would probably be this hedgehog unit, plus there's looks like there's an artillery piece as well. And I would start wearing that down with... Uh, to start with, let's find another heavy artillery unit. So let's move that here. Uh, yep. So let's start uh, knocking that one down. Good. Let's be brave. Get the flyboys in again. We've got a 50% chance of knocking out another step. And we've done that. We're doing all right. So now let's look at close combat. Not great odds, really. You'll notice um, the, there's a colour coding here. When things are really good, they're usually green or bright yellow. When things are bad, they're, uh, they're in red, and there's usually a, a dull grey background to them as well, so it's a good little colour code there. So we've knocked out a couple of steps, which is a good start. You could move. Let's get the guards involved here. Let's see if we can get uh, something useful happening here. 
Also, it would be a good idea in the first couple of turns of Kharkov to, uh, certainly for the Soviets, to step your units up, uh, stack your units and combine the, in, in combined arms. So don't, move, don't be tempted too much to move your armour out, hello, because as you're aware, the Germans have a couple of panzer divisions just sitting there and uh, an unsupported small stack out the front would be uh, very, very tempting for them to uh, knock out and then retreat back into Kharkov. So just be a little bit wary of that. Now another thing you can do, as I pointed out earlier, we've got, with your artillery, with your standard artillery pieces, don't forget them because they're still very potent. Now, so again, we're a bit far away, so let's just move that a little bit closer. Now, not quite as good as heavy artillery, but still useful. Uh, we've got, we've only had one shot at, so with artillery on that hex so far, and we've got another three to go. So let's, let's cross our fingers. No, not completely successful. One of those die is red, which means we didn't get it. But never mind, try again. Some more artillery. Okay, we, we, I think we, I think our, our luck is running out here. Let's see what kind of combat odds we can get. All right, we'll look. No, we need 25 more if we want to get up to the next level. My advice here would be perhaps to take those odds and what kind of units we've got. Now, the interesting thing is here, theoretically, the this 169th unit it should take the first step loss um, because we've got... Both of these units have got the same amount of steps. But this has got the higher attack factor. So let's prosecute that. So it just means it may, you may conserve your armour depending on that. Also, the armour has a chance. Normally, if the unit wasn't in, uh, entrenched or hedgehogged, it would have a chance for a direct attack, but you can see here there's no... There would normally be a green-coloured die indicating the possibility of a direct, uh, direct attack, and that's just not possible. You'll notice, however, that the two defending units have direct defence, so they, in fact, will have a chance of knocking off a step on the, if they roll those either of those two die there. Uh, let's cross our fingers. We've got a one-to-one, -one, so we're really knocked down this uh, this German unit uh, in preparation for next turn. Obviously, now that we've done close combat, we can't actually uh, now use artillery in that hex, but that's not a, I don't think that's a big problem. The German, if he decides to stay, is going to be in a lot of trouble. That is a very weak unit now. Notice here that the direct defence die roll was a four, which was a miss. But the artillery piece rolled a six on its direct defence and in fact caused a step loss. Step loss uh, for, from direct defence is no, a little bit different here. It actually has a little bit of a, a cloud over the step. So it gives you a, an indication of, of how steps were lost, whether it was from close combat or whether it was from a direct defence attack. Okay, so that's a very much a, a reduced hex there, and I think unless the German decided it was going, they were going to rally and uh, sally forth out of out of Kharkov and do battle on the plain of honour, I think it would be uh, not a good move for the German to be hanging around there or even reinforce that that particular hex. So anyway, there's some there's some thoughts on on one way to go about reduction of hedgehogs, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot more uh, uh, great idea, ideas out there. Um, so anyway, something to, uh, something to think on. Catch you later.